In this video, you will learn how to solve a projectile motion problem that involves firing an object at an angle. A cannonball is fired at 12.7 meters per second at an angle of 40 degrees. Caesar wants to hit the red target. Where should it be placed? Now, this problem is generally worth excellence if you can get to the end. However, there are plenty of achieved and merit opportunities on the way. What you need to do is work out the range. The range is the horizontal distance, which will give us an idea of where we had to put the target in order for Caesar to hit it. The first thing we need to do is start with a vector diagram. You can see here that we have 12.7, which represents the velocity of the, um, the cannonball. This velocity can be broken up into horizontal and vertical parts. The horizontal part is the blue dashed line, and the vertical part is the red. When breaking up into components, you can see here that this component represents our horizontal velocity, the blue dashed line, whereas the red dashed line is the vertical velocity. These two uh, velocities added together give us our 12.7 meters per second. What we want to do is use trig to work out the values of the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity vi. So because we have an angle and we're given the hypotenuse, we want to use Sokotoa in order to solve, first of all, the horizontal velocity. Now for the horizontal velocity we have the adjacent side and we also have the hypotenuse. This represents opposite, sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse, which is cosine. So cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Putting numbers in, you can see that the cosine of 40 degrees will be VH divided by 12.7, the hypotenuse of the triangle. If we then rearrange and solve this, we'll get our final solution of VH, the horizontal velocity, being 9.73 meters per second. Our next step is to now determine the vertical velocity. We use the same steps as before, but instead of using cosine, we want to use sine, because in this case, we've got the opposite side, the vertical velocity, and the horizontal side, the 12.7 meters per second. So sub subbing in numbers, we have sine of 40 degrees being equal to the vertical velocity divided by 12.7. We now rearrange and solve, and we get a final solution of the initial velocity, which is the vertical velocity, being 8.16 meters per second to 3 SF. The next step is to take this information and put it into a table. What we want to do is look at the information given in the problem and break it up into its horizontal and vertical parts. We do this by constru constructing a table. You can see here that I've got my vertical motion, which is using the kinematic formulas, and on the right hand side I have my horizontal mm -hmm. motion which is using the very basic formula d equals v times t. Now the reason why we can use that formula d is v times t is because in the horizontal direction the velocity is always constant. There are no forces acting in the horizontal velocity. Remember in year 12 we ignore friction. So putting in what I know so far I've worked out the initial vertical velocity that's going in as 8.16 meters per second on the vertical side and on the right hand side I've got my horizontal velocity which is 9.73 meters per second. I also know that the final velocity at the very top is going to be zero in the vertical direction. It's going to carry on horizontally but momentarily at the top the vertical velocity will be zero so we can write in VF as zero meters per second. Now because it's a free fall problem, that means that in the vertical we also know what the acceleration is going to be. For all free fall problems, the acceleration will always be negative 10 meters per second squared. The negative sign shows that gravity is acting down and uh, the 10 will be given to you in the exam. Sometimes you might find that you have to use numbers such as negative 9.8 or even negative 9.81. The secret is to use what they give you. In this case, we're going to use negative 10 meters per second squared. 
time at the top, we don't know this, so I'll put a question mark here for now. Right hand side, time across the whole range, the total time. Now what I do know is that the time for the whole motion, all the way from the ground to the top and back again, that time is going to be twice the time at the top. So T in the horizontal is two times the time to go up. dh, the range. This is ultimately what we're trying to find out. Now what you'll notice is that uh, to work out the range we want to use the formula d equals v times t. We don't have d, we want to find d. We have v, vh in this case, 9.73, but we don't have the total time. To work out the total time we first need to know the time to the top, which comes from the vertical motion, the vertical side of the uh, table here. To do that, we're going to have to use kinematics to solve for the time at the top. So what I want to do is find a kinematic equation which has got Vi, Vf, A and T. To remind you, these are the kinematic equations. Now looking at the four of them there, there's actually only one that we can possibly use that's got Vf, Vi, A and T in it. All the rest of them contain D, which is a bit of information we don't know. So we want to pick the formula that's highlighted red here. So now we're going to put numbers into it. Final velocity Vf, we know that's zero. It's equal to Vi, which is 8.16, minus 10t. Remember that gravity is negative, so we must put the acceleration in negative 10. If you rearrange this, you're going to get a time of 0.816 seconds. This is the time for top. We can now add this to our table. Time for top, 0.816 seconds. Now that we have the information to the top, we can easily work out the time for the whole flight. This will simply be two times the time for top. So, two times 0.816 gives you a total time of 1.63 seconds. Now we're about 99% of the way there. The last and final step is to work out the horizontal distance or the range to find out where that target needs to be put. Now we can use a simple formula, D is equal to V times T. We have all the information we need. D is V times T. The horizontal distance is 9.73, the horizontal velocity, times 1.63, which is the total time of flight. This will give us a total range or horizontal distance of 15.86 meters to 4 SF. Now really, you should be rounding this answer to the correct number of significant figures. If we go back to the beginning of the problem, we'll see that the information given to us was all three significant figures, so your final answer should be rounded to 3 SF, giving you a final answer of 15.9 meters. Now for the fun part. Here's where we can actually try it out. So, we've got our Caesar down here and his big cannon. We've got a tape measure which is sitting on 15.86 meters. This is pretty close to what we required. So if I stick the tape measure down here by the cannon, line things up, and I should now be able to move the target into the correct position. In theory, this is the right place for the cannonball to hit. Checking my numbers here, at the top here, my angle in degrees is 40, my initial speed is 12.7, at an angle of 40 degrees. I've got no drag because we ignore friction, and my last step is to choose my weapon of choice, which I think I'll go with adult human. And finally, we hit fire. Bang, score.